Of course, we've got the one and only Jenny McCartney in the booth, the social media goddess herself, uh, pushing those buttons, making the show go again today. And, uh, well, yeah, the co-hosts. I guess we'll go with the co-hosts. we got some of those, of course, coming to us uh, live via satellite, as always, from his, uh, well, his perch, I guess, high atop the Mill Bay Studios in beautiful Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada is the one and only Louis Lawless. Yes, high atop there. Are you there, Louis? You know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Yes, we got that. Don't worry. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on, on the show? <laughs> <laughs> now you go right ahead, sir. We've we've got you covered. Uh, it's about f***ing time. Move on. Move on. All right. And also joining us from his wonderful, beautiful, uh, stately... I must say, apartment uh, in Manhattan here in the big city is the one, the only, uh, what's his name again? Oh, yes, Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> uh, are, are you ready, sir? What the f***? Huh? <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Good. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right, Gilbert Godfrey joining us from his lovely home here in the city. And uh, also joining us is, of course, the one, the only George Takei, all the way from his home in Los Angeles, California. George, thank you for coming. I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, and, and thank you. That's that's awesome. Now, well, is this thing on? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's on. Is this on? Is this on? I can't tap it. I would tap it, but I won't do that. So. There you go. That's well... Right. Only one, Meeps. That's us. The only one, HTLA Radio 1 New York, and you're here and you're listening. And this is Straight Talk. And, yeah, we've got 90 minutes of uh, springtime in the city stories for you tonight. And, um, yeah, lots of social injustice stories. I'm in the mood for for ranting. We said we weren't going to do a rant show, but here we are. And it's going to turn into a rant show. It is, yes. <laughs> I can't help but be angry about the stories. You know, there's just too much to be excited about. And everybody's got to bring us down with all this stuff. Stupidity. That's right. Oh, well, we'll talk about that, too, because we've got a great show coming up for you that uh, we've got in development for a little while now. And we're going to launch that Wednesday. And we'll talk about that a bit later. That's pretty exciting. That's called The Spotlight with Kate and Crush. Absolutely. Uh-huh. And uh, tonight, a bit of a free-for-all. We're going to tear it up for you on tonight's Straight Talk. Everything from the day's events to some politics good and goodiness and the struggle, of course, to maintain home and work. We'll get into it all tonight. Professional businesswomen that I talk to, they do the work, but it's just the corporate work. And they think that's enough because, damn it, I've, I've just put 12 hours a day in today in, in my job. and Right. They feel deserving of something else, not to come home and take care of the kids and not to come home and take care of the husband and right. not to come home and take care of anything else. Right. It's time for them to kick their feet up now and go go hit the bars and relax or something because they've earned it. Right. And I'm here to say that as a man, we, 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 we do that all the time. We always have. We, we go out and work our full-time jobs or more. Right. And we come home and we're still expected to be the dad. We're still expected to help the kids with the homework. We're still expected to, to, to have activities and stuff with our family and have that interaction and put that time in. Sure. Maybe that's why we get 100% of our pay instead of 70% of our pay. Right. Right. Well, you're not... Well, in the tradition now, men are also expected to do half the housework. And half of all that stuff, whereas it used to just be before, you know, the garbages and the lawns and all that stuff that you do, the man stuff, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, So, yes, and unfortunately, in some cases, in a great majority of of the households, now more often than not, the women are working in 
you know, I have so many, you know, friends that I know that their husbands take care of the kids and drop the kids at school and do the school activities and do the projects and yes. wash the clothes. And yes, the- but, yes, but with that comes the dreaded beta male because there's not a single one right. of those men that I have met that I would look up to in battle. No, of course not. And <laughs> this is, to our, to our thinking, you know, to our thinking, and while it took us years in, uh and while it took us years in practice, it, it was an ideology that we shared from the moment that we met anyway. Yeah. The whole, you know, that was our vision for what the ideal family was. Uh, there you are, world. Yes. 3 p.m. Eastern. HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. I am broadcasting live to the world. With absolutely no pants. <laughs> no, the pants are off today on the big show. Yes, your Thursday double double. And what do we got for you today on this Thursday, the 30th of April, 2015? Eh? You might ask. I might tell you too. Seeing as how that's my job and all. But uh, yeah, yeah, we got a good show lined up for you today. Take you through your Thursday afternoon with some coffee and cigarettes. And, uh, yeah, that's all out there. Yeah, Good. Okay. Yes, sorry. Having a conversation with the girl in the booth there, Jenny McCartney, the former social media goddess. Yes. yes she doesn't touch the stuff now. <laughs> it's like a, it's like an AA meeting she goes to every week now to stay off the, the interweebs. I don't know what it is. Well, today on the big show, we got a big one for you. Baltimore police turn over gray findings to the prosecutor officially as a former Popeye's manager who was fired after a robbery is suing and seeks five and a half million dollars. Man, I didn't know a manager of a little crap restaurant was worth that much. Hey, also, we'll tell you about Kim Jong-un canceling his Russia trip. Well, uh, we got some election news. Saunders says his campaign will focus on struggling and non-existent middle class. You should get a lot of votes that way. <laughs> well, if that's not enough for you, we've also got more about uh, the hashtag in their words. Yes, gay voices on same-sex marriage and the rumor patrol is uh, speaking out today. Obama is to apparently teach law after 2016. All that and so much more today on the big show. So, hey... Come on in and grab that cup. Have a seat and light one up. It's coffee time. Good afternoon, or whatever it may be to you. For us at HTLA Studio 2 here, it is 3.03 p.m. Eastern in the big city of Manhattan. Broadcasting to you live from Studio 2, yes, where we have the one and only Jenny McCartney pushing those buttons, making the show go on her beautiful 2442 Studio Live Mixer from PreSonus. HTLA Radio 1, of course, is an exclusive PreSonus broadcast studio and uh man gotta say if you want to check out some latest and greatest in digital and analog professional audio gear well, you owe it to yourself to check out presonus.com yeah they've been doing it forever and they they've been doing it right that's what's bringing you the golden tones today as always you bet also, the show is brought to you by Tim Hortons New York City, now with eight fine locations throughout the city to serve all your coffee and baked goods needs. Check them out, gang. Always fresh, Tim Hortons. Mmm. Ah, yes. And of course, part of that deal, we get Tim Hortons here at the studio every day, and I couldn't be happier about it. It's what keeps my golden pipes golden. Yes. 
Well, moving on, uh, it's time to introduce the guest slash co-hosts that join me here every day on the show. Uh, the first one being, uh, well, my mentor 26 or 28 years ago. This man thought it would be in his best interest to teach me how to direct and produce film and television, uh, which he did, and since I have had an illustrious career, 22 years to be exact, working in and around Vancouver doing amazing things, all thanks to this one man right here, Mr. Louis Lawless from LDL Films, and uh, he's currently retired now up in Mill Bay, British Columbia, and his good friend Robin Webb has been so kind to offer his venue of Mill Bay Studios for Louis to uh, broadcast from, via satellite, of course, because that's what he likes us to say, because he doesn't like us to say that he's just on the phone. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Louis Lawless, are you there, sir? Can you give me any help for $25,000? I'm sure we can work something out. I go a half an hour, do I get 50000 <laughs> There you go again. What do you, what do you need all the money for? I, tried to, I need to try and raise $25,000 to enter in the Academy Awards. Yeah. And I think it's a fantastic risk because we have a tremendous chance. Two hundred. Uh, there's about 200 members that vote on it, and they all get. you have to give them a DVD now. Ah, well, that's one expensive DVD. <laughs> oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on, on the show? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you you go right ahead. We've got you covered with the button. It's about, about fucking time. Move on. Move on. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. Also coming to us uh, live uh, from his beautiful sprawling studio apartment, uh, well, about eight blocks down the street here in in beautiful Manhattan, is the one, the only, Mister Gilbert Godfrey. Are you there, sir? Yes. All right. Well, don't break anything trying to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The big question, though, is, is are you ready? That's what I want to know. The fuck? What? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, good. That's, that's what we want to hear. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, well, moving on. Now, now, before we actually get into the show, of course, though, we do have that obligatory dealio, thanks to Gilbert's uh, lawyers. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> can't get away from them. They're Jewish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, so, without further ado, uh, Gilbert is going to sing his little song. Hang on. Na, 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 na. <laughs> ba, ma, 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 ma. Oh, yeah. Who wants to grow up? Who wants responsibility? Oh, no, not me. <laughs> Who wants to show up and work until you're 93? <laughs> Now everybody says you're running wild. The teacher's calling you a problem. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there it is. That's Gilbert Gottfried singing, of course, the theme from Problem Child. Um, he was in Problem Child, the movie. Yes. Uh, then Problem Child 2, the sequel. Yes. Uh, then Problem Child 3, the made-for-television extraordinary masterpiece. Yes. And now, yes, they are bringing it back again, and yet, well, it's not actually a sequel, sequel, sequel. Yes. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> they're bringing it back again in a, a brand new movie, but it's the same movie as the first one. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. And, and you, of course, will be playing your, your character there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's good. That's good. But, you know, it's always um, good to, to make more money. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And uh, expose the public to this crap that is problem <laughs> child. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. The problem child was probably a wonderful film, but I wouldn't watch it if you paid me. Yes. <laughs> I've got enough of those of my own. Yeah. yeah. Well, moving on today, our first big story on the program today is, of course, Baltimore police turning over their gray findings to the prosecutor. Yes, they are. The Baltimore Police Department, acting a day ahead of schedule, turned over to the state's attorney today its investigative findings into the death of Freddie Gray, but will not immediately release the material to the public, Police Commissioner Anthony Batts said. The crowd outside the police station was heard to have all said in unison, Oh. 
Well, the state's attorney will determine whether charges will be brought against any of the six suspended police officers involved in Gray's arrest. No timetable has been set for that decision. The latest development comes amid a disputed allegation that a prisoner sharing a police van with Gray, who died of spinal injuries while in police custody, hurt him intentionally trying to injure himself. There's also been uh, other, uh, well, now were rumors uh, a couple of days ago, now have actually been substantiated uh, by those who say that he did have a previous spinal cord injury. <laughs> now, Well, the death of the 25-year-old black male one week after his arrest had sparked almost two weeks of protests that turned violent Monday, prompting the governor to call out the National Guard. Bats told reporters that despite turning over the department's file on Gray and his case to state prosecutors, police were treating it as an active investigation and would be following new leads whenever possible. He said 30 officers worked around the clock to complete uh, or complete its work because of his sense of urgency regarding the case. Family and community deserve transparency and truth, he said. Although the material was not immediately being made public, he said state's attorney Marilyn Mosby is committed to seeing justice. I wonder what kind of glasses she'll be wearing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake said that after the state's attorney completes her criminal investigation, an internal disciplinary police department process can begin. She also noted that the U.S. Department of Justice is undertaking its own independent inquiry. And she's also inferring here that there will be an internal disciplinary action uh, after that judgment. All right, so the uh, panel finds no wrongdoing, yes. and uh, the, the policemen are free to return to their jobs. Well, no, 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 we're going to have internal discipline now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the family of Mr. Gray wants answers. I want answers. Our entire city deserves answers into Mr. Gray's death, the mayor said. I ask everyone to remain patient and vigilant on that path to justice. And quit smashing and burning crap. (laughs) Well, the state's attorney's office confirmed that it had received hard copies of the files, but said that the information was not new to prosecutors who are conducting their own probe and have also been briefed regularly by police in the case. While we have and will continue to leverage the information received by the department, we are not relying solely on their findings, but rather facts that we have gathered and verified, Mosby said in the statement. We ask for the public to remain patient, peaceful, and to trust the process of the justice system and to stop smashing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing an overall thing here. You stop smashing stuff. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this, this story is just, yeah. Well, Jamal Bryant, pastor of Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, called police shameful for telling the public about the report's release date but not giving residents any more details about Gray's death. It's a contrived, botched public relations campaign from the police department. He says it's insulting to the intelligence of citizens of this city. Besides, if we don't hear what the the outcome is, we we can't go and burn and smash shit. Well, he also said explanations for not releasing the reports were malarkey and the officials are unjustly cherry-picking information that they want. It's going to make our job a lot harder to rile the city up and cause more explosions. <laughs> well, lifelong Baltimore resident Herber Brown, 34, said police releasing the report a day early shows the power and pressure of the protests that have swelled across the city. The police were really hoping this would go away and that people would just forget about it, Brown, pastor at Pleasant Hope Baptist Church, says. We have forced the police to do what they didn't want to do, to submit a report in a timely way and get on the right track of having some sort of resolution around what happens to these officers. Brown, a member of activist group... uh, Baltimore United for Change added that it shouldn't have taken organized people marching in the streets to get the report. Uh, To which I would respond to Mr. Brown, you call that marching? (laughs) Looked like frickin' Sarajevo. Come on. 
Croatia. You pick one. <laughs> Man, the, the 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 pictures and images I saw from there, wow! It is like I don't know. We were looking at somewhere in Africa, some <laughs> some some war torn African place with with yes. <laughs> Uh, well, a coalition of activists plan to march from Baltimore State's Attorney's Office to City Hall Friday to demand quote. The rapid prosecution of police officers involved in Gray's killing. See, they don't care about evidence. <laughs> Screw it. No, no, no. We just want that rapid prosecution. Yes. yes. <laughs> Bullshitters, never keep your mouth shut. Always hustling, always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. That's, that's a f***ing American. Look how they took the country away from England. It's always about England. <laughs> What the hell was that? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 Gilbert. Come on. Now, now, what was that? That's that's that was horrible. I, I, are are you okay? You know, I'm the most talented guy in this room. Well, yes, but again, that's because you're sitting alone in your apartment. Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, the ra- rapid prosecution of those police officers involved in the killing and legal reforms, of course, to ensure that bad cops are held responsible for unlawful acts. That's funny. I thought we always had that in this country. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the event that was supposed to coincide with the release of the police report into Gray's death, but organizers say they will still gather despite the report being turned over Thursday... Ain't nobody going to take out our fire, <laughs> was, was the official quote there. Elizabeth Alex, a lead organizer in Baltimore with CASA, a nonprofit that focuses on immigrant rights. Why the Spanish word for house, I don't know. <laughs> Well, CASA says demonstrators will call on state's attorney Marilyn Mosby to be transparent and act properly. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that would be uh, stringing up the six gallows for the officers. <laughs> now, people want ultimately the officers responsible for Freddie Gray's death held accountable, Alex said. Well, Alex has got some ES frickin' P then, because how the hell does she know? <laughs> she said the next few days will be crucial as people may become increasingly angry if more information is not made public. I'm hopeful that by giving people an outlet that will be peaceful and organized, we can show the power of the community and clearly demonstrate the priorities and demands without resorting to violence or burning down shoe stores. (laughs) Now that dispute over a prisoner's alleged recollection of what occurred the night Gray was arrested underscored the pressure for disclosure surrounding the events. The statement from the unidentified prisoner was contained in an application for a search warrant, the Washington Post reported today. The warrant has been sealed by the court, but the Post said that it had obtained the documents under the condition that the prisoner not be named. The newspaper noted that the prisoner, although sharing the police van, was separated from Gray by a metal partition and could not directly see him. According to the document, the prisoner's tol- er, prisoner told investigators that Gray was banging against the walls inside the vehicle intentionally trying to injure himself. WBAL-TV, however, reports that its investigation showed no evidence to support the second prisoner's claim. Because, of course, WBAL-TV was, of course, in the prisoner transport. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Investigative reporter Jane Miller told MSNBC Today that the medical evidence from the hospital in an autopsy found that Gray died of a single severe spinal injury resulting from a broken neck. Miller said the medical evidence does not support a claim that Gray had been banging his head against the van wall. WBAL also reported the video footage shows that the second prisoner was only in the van for five minutes and that officers can be seen looking into the wide open van at the point where he was picked up. If there was an irate, disruptive prisoner banging his head, certainly it doesn't look in the video that they, quote, the officers, were worried about what Miller said. 
The reporter also noted that the unidentified prisoner has a number of years hanging over his head and has given two different accounts of the events that night. Gray's death touched off a series of protests. Uh, let's be fair here. A series of frickin' riots. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, well, no, these are protests that led to violence. They're not riots. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you go take a look at some of those photos. You just take a look at some of those photos. Yeah, Monday in Baltimore that provoked a week-long emergency at nighttime curfew. The demonstrations in the cities directed at the gray case and the general police treatment of blacks saw droves of chanting protesters lining city blocks and spilling into nearby streets. Thousands massed outside City Hall on Wednesday to protest Gray's death and uh, the outrage spread to New York City where other large throng gathered in New Union Square. Baltimore Police Commissioner Anthony Batt said 18 people were arrested Wednesday, including two juveniles. Police in New York re re arrested more than 60 people. There were encouraging signs, including peaceful protests, open schools, and a free concert on a sunny day that Baltimore might be righting itself after Monday's devastating violence and chaos. Six officers have been suspended with pay pending the investigation that could result in criminal charges. The latest protest took place outside Mosby's office. Uh, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake sought to defuse a new flashpoint by correcting misinformation that a report on the case would be made public Friday. Cheryl Stewart, spokeswoman for the mayor, said the findings of the police investigations will not be made public anytime soon, indeed, if at all. <laughs> yeah. The state's attorney's office will review the report and decide whether to charge anyone in Gray's death, she said. The misconception that this report will be released publicly is completely not true. It, it will not be. And we just want to make it clear that releasing too much information could also be harmful to the investigation and to justice. And Lord knows, countless, countless, countless piles of more criminal charges. <laughs> Well, everybody is pining on Friday like this is going to be a big verdict or something that's not going to happen, Stewart said. I understand people want the details, but giving it to the public could jeopardize whether charges will be brought. The protests, while counting on the thousands during the day, have dwindled to only small crowds at night since the city ordered a 10 p.m. curfew bolstered by 1,000 law enforcement officers and some 3,500 National Guard troops. We're asking that they remain peaceful, Baltimore Police Captain Eric Kowalsik said. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan said he was very encouraged by the relative calm. We're not out of the woods yet. No, that's that's what Hogan said. Never mind. Never mind. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do that. It's it's not going to be me. Yes. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> there we go. Uh, we are going to go now for our first uh, commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you about that Popeye's manager who seems to think that, man, her job is just so important. She's worth five and a half million bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, this, this is good, Gilbert. You know, you'll want to stick around for this. Back in two. You've got it locked to HLA Radio 1, New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions, abundant with rich, fertile soil? What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches, and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it? Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons. Always fresh. Always great tasting coffee. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. 
I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonnyville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow, that's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Mirashi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, White Horse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the prairies, bear, man. I breathed the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my share, man. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. Hi, I'm Mike. Founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at, at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got them long hair, sleep. There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Hey, you two jokes, hey, you. <laughs> Oh man, you know I, I I don't know if if it's I don't know if it's just me. When when you do that, it's it's kind of scary. Yes. Um, <laughs> Break well, for a commercial. Uh, <laughs> oh, are, are you? Uh, wow, are you okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's, man, I, I don't know what to say, Gilbert. Uh, it's it's just a thing, you know. Now, how did you find out that Sandra Bullock was Jewish? Look, I've told you about this before. It's it's the damn nose. 
telling you, man, it's it's. Uh, well, you know that, and and I just I have my sources. Yes, but how did you? And it would be a, a Jewish wedding, of course. Uh, but how did you find out that Sandra Bullock was Jewish? Okay, I okay, I'll I'll say it. I just approached her in the restaurant, uh, grabbed her by the collar. <laughs> I, uh, I held her close, and uh, and I just looked into her eyes, and I said, "Are you Jewish?" Yes. <laughs> and, I, and that's what she said. She was, yeah. So, because I always thought she she admits to being German. Oh yeah, yeah. That's or I don't know if she, but like her mother was a big opera German opera star. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I absolutely knew that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, I did. Her, her mother was actually there. Yes. Uh, at the restaurant, and I, after I put Sandra down, I, I grabbed Mom by the collar and <laughs> yard, yarded her ass up and said, "Hey, aren't you that German opera star?" Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the big show today, Coffee and Cigarettes, HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. And this is your Thursday double-double for Thursday the 30th of April 2015. 63 degrees right now in the city and uh, sun's peeking out there. Partly cloudy. It's looking good too. It's, it's uh, I got to say, you know, in, in, the, in the, you know, past nine, ten months of winter, um... <laughs> You know, it's it's good to see, you know, the high for Fridays looking at uh, 59. Uh, okay, well, that's not great. Yes. No, um, <laughs> that's, uh, it's kind of crappy anyway. Always when, always with a female is having a relationship, married or single. Mm-hmm. It's always better that they do the leaving. <laughs> if you do the leaving, it creates that lingering thing. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Yes. I, I think I do, Louis. Um, I'm... Uh, no, no, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know what you mean at all. I don't have a clue. He well, needs love, Chris. Come on. Who you I gotta, know? You got to you got to dispense more love from yourself. All these people are are hurting here. Okay. All right. I can do that. I can do that. Well, let's 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 bring the love, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Time to bring the love. Our next uh, lovely story up here for the uh, viewing public or, or the listening public yes. guest to <laughs> <laughs> gaze your your orals on. <laughs> yes, fix your orals on this one. Yeah. Well, Popeye's manager that was fired after that robbery we told you about, uh, well, I guess about four weeks ago now. Uh, she's uh, well. She's she's madder than hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. She wants five and a half million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Then Houston, the pregnant restaurant manager who was fired after refusing to pay back money taken during an armed robbery, is now demanding five point five million dollars. That's better than the robbery. <laughs> Oh, yes. Marissa Holcomb is asking for the amount for emotional distress, of course. (laughs) Yes, because, uh, yeah. Holcomb was the manager at a Popeye's fried chicken restaurant when a man held her at gunpoint during her March 31st shift and demanded that she empty the cash register. Surveillance video shows a man run into the restaurant with a beanie over his face while waving a gun. He forced all employees to the floor, then turned his attention to Holcomb. Holcomb said she was originally terminated because she refused to pay back the $400 that was stolen during the robbery. The owner of Z&H Foods, Amendianhani Ali, <laughs> frickin' guy. No, but we don't support terrorism. Yes. No, I was. <laughs> yes, argued that she was fired because she broke company policy multiple times by leaving too much money in that register. Holcomb was offered her job back and $2,000 in back pay. A letter from her attorney, Mark Bozeman, states that, quote, even though you have offered to give the job back to her only to save face after experiencing bad publicity, the damage from your egregious conduct has been done, chicken man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. 
Yes. Well, Holcomb's attorney is now giving Popeyes and the, the local franchise ZH Foods 30 days to respond to the request, or he will file a lawsuit. So, so it's just a request. You don't you don't have to give us five and a half million dollars. <laughs> Well, in the meantime, Holcomb, who just is just so damned loyal, yes. <laughs> yes, will be working at a different Popeyes location. Her first day is today. Popeyes did not return any of our requests for comment. Um, so you're suing Popeyes, yes, <laughs> right for for wrongful dismissal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but you're working at Popeyes, uh, and you want five and a half million dollars. <laughs> maybe, maybe her attorney should kind of instruct her that you know it's kind of a conflict of her entire case and indeed existence on this planet. Yes. <laughs> To work for the company she's suing five and a half million dollars for because they won't hire her, they fired her, or they they want four hundred bucks, or they get f-ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. <laughs> now here's a story I'm sure you're tired of talking about, but I'd be remiss in not bringing it up, well, and that's course. when you beat up a transvestite. You, you, you've always got to bring up the the good stuff, you know. And it's, why, why is why can't you just you know I don't know bring up the good things I did? Like, did you know in grade one in grade one at St. Patrick's uh, Elementary School there, I got to play the lead role of Santa Claus in the Christmas play. Did you <laughs> did you know that I was Santa Claus, and and my family, well. None of them showed up, but well, no. Actually, actually, no, no, that's not true. Uh, my my grandfather um, drug his drunk ass in there. Yes. <laughs> he he actually he actually made it, and uh, well, about halfway through my third line, he was vomiting on the floor. <laughs> Break for a commercial. Yeah. <laughs> I think I will. But not before we get into our next story, which is, of course, the, the big, 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 big news. <laughs> uh, yes, the big news. Uh, Korea's Kim Jong-un. Yes, he's canceling his plans to go to Russia. <laughs> there we go. Kim Jong-un canceled plans to visit Russia in the coming weeks, citing internal issues with North Korea, according to a statement from the Kremlin today. I guess they're having a shortage of cardboard to make army trucks out of. (laughs) (laughs) The highly anticipated trip would have been Kim's first official foreign visit since taking power in 2011 after the death of his most awesome father. Well, he has decided to stay in Pongyang. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters in a conference call, according to NBC News. This decision is related to North Korea's internal affairs, he said. The leader of the reclusive nation has been scheduled to arrive in time for Moscow's May 9th Victory Day Parade to celebrate the 70th anniversary of defeating the Nazis in World War II. As part of the visit, Kim was to have met with Russian Russian president. Yeah, who the hell's Russian? <laughs> <laughs> and Vladimir Putin, of course, CNN reported, citing Russia's TASS news agency. In March, Russia said that Kim was among the 26 world leaders who had accepted invitations to take part in the commemorations, the Associated Repre- Press reported. However, North Korea never confirmed Kim planned to attend. President Obama and other top Western leaders are snubbing the event because Russia's incursion into eastern Ukraine and its annexation of Crimea last year, doing, as President Obama says, much the same thing as Hitler did. (laughs) Uh, Well, don't let that stop your little parte. Yes. (laughs) Which which, uh, woman are you married to or living with now? The same one? The, what, the, the mother of the daughter or the 
Was it a boy? Louis, this isn't a personal call. <laughs> You're, you're, you're actually on the air yes. right now. You have, you have millions and millions of people all over the world are listening to you right now. You know why, Chris? Because you're such a, a control freak. You don't want anyone to tell you what to do. Really? Is, is that? Yeah? You think so, huh? No. No. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. <laughs> Oh. And, and another time, you were going to buy uh, drugs from your pusher, and you were like a block away, and then somebody walked up to your pusher first and shot your pusher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you, I, I don't know where you get this stuff, you know? Yes. I, I really don't. <laughs> you, you just make it up right on the fly, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, well, there we go. Um, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing now. I'll get you, General Rommel! <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, that, that's what I mean. That's why I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing right now. <laughs> I, I, just, I, don't, I don't know. Let's fight Hitler! <laughs> uh, you're going to have to change that soon for the Russians. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, moving on today. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, moving on. We we've got to go for another commercial. Break for a commercial. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's do that. <clears throat> we're gonna break for a, a commercial, but when we come back, don't you worry, because uh, of course we're gonna bring you uh, that 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 latest and greatest uh, presidential candidate, uh, Mr. Saunders, there saying his campaign will focus on that struggling, non-existent middle class. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you're you're seriously gonna break something. I, yes. I don't know what you're gonna do, but I don't know how you do that. But I I'm just gonna carry on. We'll be back in two. You've got it locked to New York's best talk, HTLA Radio One. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome-ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop-up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. Or 10 at night. In Chilliwack, B.C. Or St. Peter's, Nova Scotia. It could be Michelle. Or Mark. Or Jen. But whenever. Wherever you order that cup of Tim Hortons premium blend coffee, you know that it's always. 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 Fresh. From Newfoundland and Labrador to Vancouver Island, Tim Hortons, a coffee all our own. When we, we arrived, arrived at our hotel, hotel in New York, York the, the porter was, was so incredibly careful, careless with, with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the, but best the worst part was the shower. shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation, vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. 
With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that long hair, slick back, white t-shirt and I got that good girl face and a tight little skirt and when we go crashing down, we come back every time cause we never go out we of never style, go. we never go out of style, take me out. There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Hey, yo, Joe Joe, hey, it's Cary Grant as <laughs> a canter. Hey, yo, Joe Joe, hey, it's a guy, hey, Well, you you are one nutty sob. That's... <laughs> oh. Well, welcome back to all the laughs today. Of course, on the uh, what the hell show are we doing? Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, coffee and cigarettes. Your Thursday double double on HTLA Radio One, New York's best talk and canting. Yes, yes, <laughs> or canting. Yeah, something like that. Hey, yo, Joe, Joe, say it. <laughs> oh. It, it seemed like Dean Martin was uncomfortable, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, we saw him yesterday at the bus stop, and he didn't have his bottle of Ripple. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Get your, get your, get your Rommel on. Now, here's a segue. Yeah. You general Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sixty-four degrees in New York's Central Park right now. Partly cloudy, but the sun is uh, having its way with the clouds, just banging it for all it's worth, yeah. you know. <laughs> and uh, we're back here on the big show at uh, three forty-eight p.m. in the afternoon. I think after this show's over, I'm going to get the hell out of here with topless Jenny and. <laughs> to go hit some uh, some geese in Central Park. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything uh, you know you'd like to add, Louis? Wait a minute, I got lost. H T L A. No. H T L A. Hell is that? Well, that's the end of your career, my friend. <laughs> uh, we, we're five steps away from winning the Academy Award. And he didn't. And we did. No. Say. <laughs> And that is why, sir, you are here. Yes, <laughs> we, we, uh, we like we like to recognize the the talent of greatness yes. <laughs> and uh, the agony, of course, of defeat. Uh, <laughs> well, well, Gilbert, I, I I hate to remind you, but you're on the show too. <laughs> Uh, is is that your crying laugh? Yes. Is that, yeah. <laughs> well, before the break, we told you about uh, Bernie Saunders there saying his campaign is going to focus on that struggling slash non-existent middle class. 
<laughs> well, in Washington today, Bernie Sanders has said the thir- today that he wants to return to Congress and the nation to uh, the American people and end billionaires' outside influence on politics. Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wonder if he actually went to politics school and found out that, you know, that 1% that he's complaining about is actually the reason he has a job. Yes. You know, that's, there wouldn't be any senators if it wasn't for those 1% rich bastards. <laughs> well, he says, quote, this beautiful capital and this country belong to all of us, the Vermont Independent said at a 15-minute news conference on Capitol Lawn as he officially announced his bid for the Democratic nomination for president. He goes on to further say, quote, How can it happen at the top 1% owns almost as much wealth as the other 99%? It's not only immoral, it's not only wrong, it can't continue. All supporters of his campaign have dropped out. There we go. Well, Saunders, a progressive, is the first major candidate to enter the Democratic primary race against former Secretary of State and great coffee lady Hillary Clinton. (laughs) (laughs) And is expected to run well to her left. The former Burlington, Vermont mayor, who grew up in a working class family in Brooklyn, said he wants to focus on the problems of the middle class Americans who are working longer to earn less and can't afford to send their kids to college. He said he will propose offering free tuition at public colleges and universities. Well, isn't that nice for him? (laughs) Official statement from the public colleges and universities was, go to hell. (laughs) Uh, Responding to Sanders' comments, Clinton tweeted Thursday, quote, I agree with Bernie. Focus must be on helping America's middle class. GOP would hold them back. I welcome him to the race and my coffee table. (laughs) Well, Sanders said his candidacy will test whether the presidency can be won without being black or taking (laughs) taking contributions from corporate political action committees, to which, again, I say, Mr. Sanders, good luck. (laughs) He's going to have, like... uh, some, somewhere in Wisconsin, there's going to be some local TV station that will run his ad for 1500 bucks. Yes. That's, that's, that's where you're going to get there. Well, Saunders said he intends to raise most of his money from the millions of individual donors giving small donations. That's right. He's looking to that non-existent middle class to fund him. <laughs> Uh, I wonder in this day and age if any candidate who is not a billionaire or not beholden to billionaires can win, he said. Saunders has led unsuccessful efforts in Congress to overturn a 2010 Supreme Court decision in the Citizens United versus FEC that said the First Amendment bars the government from restricting independent expenditures by corporations and other groups. We now have a situation where, where billionaires are able to buy elections. What do you mean now? <laughs> That's that's just called political history, bud. Yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yes. Sanders said that he has never run personal attack ads against his opponents and will not do so in the presidential race. To say that people disagree on issues and point that out, that's what the debate is about, he said. But vicious personal attacks against other candidates, I've never done that in my life. But let me tell you... I run vigorous campaigns. He probably told his wife he was vigorous in bed, too. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, Missy, I'll rock your world. Yeah. <laughs> well, in an appeal to the media, he said, Allow us to discuss the important issues affecting the American people. Let us not hang up on soap opera issues. Uh, Well, Mr. Sanders, I would point to uh, fill up my mouth with farts. (laughs) Yes, and of course, if you all don't know uh, Phil, um, here is the uh, ad campaign that we've uh, done up here. Uh, Yes, you'll love this. This is great. Uh, Here we go. Hi, I'm Gil Fulbright. The people who run my campaign, they've made this commercial, and I'm in it. 
This campaign, it's not about me. It's about crafting a version of me that'll appeal to you. A version that visits random work sites with paid actors pointing at things. Yeah. A version of me that doesn't find old people loathsome or pointless. Yeah. <laughs> Has a conventionally attractive yet curiously still family. Listening to my constituents, legislating, these are things I don't do. What I do is spend about 70% of my time raising funds for re-election. <laughs> I'd do anything to stay in office. My name's Gil Fulbright, but hell, I'll change my name to Phil Goldbright or Bill Fulbright or fill up my mouth with farts. <laughs> these are the things that are important to me. And these are the fine people that finance my campaign. Now, in order to do these things, I have to stay in office. And to stay in office, I have to keep these guys happy. Now, if any of these things make these guys unhappy, well, my hands are tied. Yeah. To come November, the choice is clear. Do you want another spineless mouthpiece for special interest and lobbyists? Oh, yeah. Or a spineless mouthpiece for special interest and lobbyists? I'm Philip a mouth with farts, and I approve this message. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love that. Yes. You know? <laughs> well, Bernie... Kind of, I don't know. I just read your story, and that just totally reminded me of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, moving on this afternoon, we got to get to it because we got two more to go, and not a whole lot of time to do it in. Uh, so let's talk about uh, gay voices on same-sex marriage, shall we? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. Yes, we, this is important. We have to. Yes. <laughs> well, this week, the Supreme Court hears. Ooh, oral arguments. <laughs> really? We're, we're paying our Supreme Court justices to sit around and hear all that slurping? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, Frank. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Stop up, man. <laughs> Yes, that's right. This week, Supreme Court is hearing oral arguments. <laughs> about whether state bans on same-sex marriages are constitutional. Well, the USA Today Network has the hashtag InTheirWords project, which explores the stories of men and women within the gay community about why they deserve federal marriage, goddammit. <laughs> yes, and uh, that goes on ad nauseum, and I'm not reading it. There we go. But uh, as we all know and love to do on the, on this show, Coffee and Cigarettes, we, we, we were always, 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 always on the lookout for Obama news. Yes. <laughs> yes, and there's, there's quite the speculation actually brewing on social media about uh, what the hell he's going to do after the White House. And um, uh, we've got a story today which is uh, telling us uh, about the latest rumors. Of course, I'm insisting that he's going to go and try and be an actor in Hollywood. <laughs> You just see him at the, on the casting couch, too. You know, Spielberg's there. Okay, so, um, yeah, Barack, uh, you're, you're trying out today for the role of uh, president in my new Cataclysm movie. Yes. <laughs> and uh, could, could you say that line again, only this time put some, some I, I don't know, oomph in it like, like you actually mean it? <laughs> Oh, that would be so great. Yeah. Yes. Well, anyway, speculation about Barack Obama's post-presidential life rolls on. The New York Post's page six now says the president is rumored to be in talks for a teaching gig at Columbia Law School after he leaves the White House on January 20th of 2017. Teaching law at Columbia. Go frickin' figure. <laughs> Well, apparently, according to some trumped-up documents, <laughs> this uh, non-American Muslim yes. was <clears throat> was a Columbia undergraduate back in the day, getting a degree in uh, 1983. He has taught law at the University of Chicago in the past. The Post quotes an unnamed source as saying, quote, President Obama is considering his next move after leaving the White House. 
It is clear that he is giving thought to his work with his foundation, the creation of his presidential library, and how could uh, how he could continue to work in an influential role, like he's got one now or something. <laughs> um, now, there has been talk of him teaching at Columbia Law School, but nothing has been confirmed or set in stone. There are other reports that the Obamas are planning to move to New York. Oh, crap. <laughs> yes, after he is out of office or to California. See, he's going to go to California. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Or back to their old house in Chicago or stay in Washington. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Geez, why don't they throw in a few others, too? Like, well, he might live in Alaska. Yes. <laughs> yeah, word is he likes Palin, but then again, he's, he, he could move to Texas or Florida. <laughs> uh, yeah, speculation is, it, you know, it, it reminds me of CNN's Wolf Blitzer, you know? <laughs> oh, that guy is great. If there is anybody in this business that can sit there for 17 hours straight and talk about where things might happen and what things might happen. That's him. <laughs> uh, I, th I think his, his, his slogan, Gilbert, uh, should be speculation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I definitely think. Wolf speculation blitzer. Yeah. There you go. Uh, now, here's a segue. Yeah. Oh, yeah? No, Frank and I were talking that your mother was in a movie... We've had the Bride of Frankenstein discussion. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just, just, move, move on to something else. Hey, you two jokes. Hey. <laughs> uh, well, Obama himself, speaking today to a group of middle school students, raised the possibility that he would return to some kind of community service work after he moves out of the White House. That's the kind of work I really love to do, he said. What, during his prison stint? Um, I, I love the community service and getting out of the the, the hole. Yes. Yeah. That's the, the kind of work I really love to do. Well, you know what they say, as always, of course, stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned. And that is all. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here, uh, Louis. First of all, thank you. It was uh, great to have you as always. Didn't you read the goddamn <laughs> script? I sent it to you. <laughs> <laughs> what was was there something else I was supposed to mention? I tried. To, I need to try and raise twenty five thousand dollars to enter the Academy Awards, oh. and I think it's a fantastic yeah. trip because <laughs> we have a tremendous chance. Two hundred. Uh, there's about two hundred members that vote on it and they all get you have to give them a DVD now right yeah. oh no I would say oh go ahead what <laughs> <laughs> what Oh, all righty, Gilbert. Thank you, and 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 thank you again for being here again today. It's it's always great to have you here and having you do your little chant. Hey, you two jokes. Hey. <laughs> oh, you crazy, crazy, crazy little weird man. Yeah. Right, just... Well, thank you, thank you, and we'll we'll see you again tomorrow, right? Thank you for listening and support the show for the love of God. God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes and of course the one and only arnold schwarzenegger oh no screw him yeah <laughs> i like it he well, needs love chris come on yeah you I gotta, know. you gotta you gotta dispense more love from yourself all these people are, are hurting here well let them hurt yes <laughs> And once again, thank you to all the listeners, HTLA Radio 1, Coffee and Cigarettes. Join us tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, for your Friday espresso or cappuccino or double something, something, something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 3 p.m. Eastern, we'll see you then. Be sure tonight, follow uh, Film 101. Coming out with our big show Thursday night here, 9 p.m. Eastern, for the, uh, the F-55 camera. Yes, I know, exciting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Well, once again, have a great day. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you tomorrow.
Best Talk Radio, HTLA Radio 1.